<laughs> All right, at this time I'd like to call a uh, regularly scheduled meeting, which is the Department uh, City Commission, which is posted to order. And call upon Commissioner Yellowhorn to lead us in a different kitchen. Please join me in prayer. Yes. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you today to give you honor and praise. We recognize that you are the source of all that is good and that you are the source of all our blessings. Thank you for all the gifts of this life that you have bestowed upon us. We thank you for the freedom and opportunity to gather together today. We ask for your blessing upon this meeting. We ask that you would guide and direct our meeting so that it is full of wisdom, productivity, and respect for one another. Thank you for helping to guide our work on behalf of our neighbors and our community. In your name we pray. Amen. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, I'd like to welcome everybody to our City Commission meeting. We're glad to have you here. And uh, without objection, I'm going to take uh, a part of citizen communication uh, out of order. And we have uh, two individuals who signed up to uh, speak with us, Julian uh, Vesquiola, and uh, of the Family Consumer Science. Uh, she's the Family Consumer Science County Agent, and Enrique Pettis, who's the, uh, with AgriLife uh, County Agent. So if you all like to come up and and a report on your project we'd like to love to hear from good afternoon uh, i want to say thank you so much for all the support that we have from the city of carlington and uh, you have a little flyer there with the pictures you know uh, people were very happy with the recipes and enjoyed it and we have also a program for youth and we have around 15 children that they learn about nutrition and physical activity as well and, uh, and the, the reason uh, having this program is to provide information to the cities of the Cameron County to learn how to eat health, you know, healthy and, and, uh, and also save money when they are doing that and have a very uh, simple recipe so everybody you know, can eat healthy. So thank you so much for your support. And also I wanna share with you that we have another program, you know, if you wanna do it as well, uh, the name is Walk Across Texas and this one has to do also with exercise. And this is a free program as well. So if you want more information about this one, I will be happy to, to give you the information. Also, you have some bags there with some goodies for you, so you can you know, get something that we uh, share with the people in the community center. But also, I want to ask the mayor if you want to receive this, you know, and it's to thank you for all the support that the city of Carlington provided to our agency, Texas A&M Agri-Life Extension. Thank you. And, and thank you all for bringing that great program to our community. It looks like you, you had a fantastic turnout. Uh, I know Al was there, and it fits right in with our Healthy Harlingen initiative. So thank you so much for, for putting this program on in, in our community. Anything else? We are there for to help. Thank you. Thank you. All uh, right, we'll, we'll do the rest of the citizen communication at the end of the meeting. So uh, item one is the presentation of the proclamation <coughs> claiming the month of August as Spinal uh, Muscular Atrophy Awareness Month. And so I'd like to uh, invite uh, uh, those that are involved in this presentation, uh, Kristen Resendez, Jack Resendez, uh, Ramiro and Sylvia Resendez, Erasmo and Cecilia Resendez, Paul and Mary Castillo and Jaime and Irma Resendez and Jennifer Molina and any others that would like to join us up here for the presentation of this proclamation. <laughs> how are you? I'm good. Good, how are you? Good, good. Good to see your friend here. Yes. Well, come on, come, come on, if you want to maybe face the audience here. You know, like a, somebody's going to take your picture at some point. Uh, but we want to see what this proclamation is and to help us raise awareness for this important issue. Whereas spinal muscular atrophy, SMA, is a rare neurodegenerative disease that robs people of physical strength 
by affecting the motor nerve cells in the spinal cord, impeding their ability to walk, swallow, and in the most severe cases, the ability uh, to breathe. And whereas SMA has four primary stages, <coughs> types uh, one, two, three, and four, based on the age of the onset and type physical mild cell disease, <coughs> type one is the most severe and most common, typically diagnosed during, during an infant's first six months. It is often fatal at this early stage of life and whereas SMA is the leading genetic cause of death for infants, for infants today, affecting approximately 1 in 11,000 babies, approximately 12,000 Americans are affected with four types of SMA, and one in every 50 Americans is a genetic carrier. And whereas SMA can affect any race or gender, and although research is ongoing, an important announcement is being made every day to find a cure. As of December 23rd, 2016, uh, the first ever treatment for SMA in Toronto was approved by the FDA. We have resolved that I am Mayor Chris Boswell uh, of the City of Harlem to hereby proclaim the month of August 2017 as Spinal Muscular Atrophy Awareness Month in Harlem, Texas, and urge all citizens to join in promoting awareness of spinal muscular atrophy disease. So we'd like to present this proclamation to you and we'll recognize you and your family. And Captain Jack's been a regular at our, at our city events here lately. And I really enjoy having him around. And uh, we're, we're so glad that you're, you're bringing uh, this kind of awareness to our community. And if you'd like to say anything, please do. Um, what I'd like to say is uh, every day I meet a new family in the valley in Harlingen that are affected by this disease who do not ever speak out, who don't ever tell anybody, who don't ever find out, who don't ever call for more answers. Um, my son is one of the only children in the valley, or is the only child in the valley that received um, the first ever ACA uh, treatment for SMA, and um, we have to go to Dallas to do that, and it's every four months for the rest of the so it's a really big deal. Um, I, I, I love this community. I grew up here. And uh, my hopes are that I, I can save lives here um, by raising awareness and um, community at this team. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Two is the approval of the minutes of the regular meeting of July 19, 2017. Are there any additions or corrections to the minutes? Hearing none, is there a motion to approve the minutes? That's a motion to Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. <coughs> Items 3A through K are the consent agenda items. Is there a motion to adopt the consent agenda? Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Aye. 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 All those in favor say aye. Aye. As opposed, Mike Sign, motion carries. Item four is consideration of possible action to approve the recommendation of Scott Gibbs, insurance consultant with Thrift, Siegels, and Williams regarding the employee's health and group insurance for fiscal year 2017-18, naming the insurance agents and authorized city manager to sign the contract. So, Scott, if you'd like to come, please come forward and, and uh, tell us what you recommend. Okay. <coughs> Mayor, Commissioners, City Manager, uh, thanks for having me today. Um, so we started this process, this, the presentation will probably look a little familiar. Um, so we started the, the uh, process um, where, you know, we moved to Blue Cross last year from Allegiant. Um, the initial renewal came out at about 22%. First year renewals are always tough um, for carriers on the fully insured side. Um, just, you know, by the time you start doing it, they don't have a lot of credibility, mature claims. So uh, the first year is always kind of the toughest year. So a little bit on the current plan history. So um, when you look at our loss ratio from October 1st, 2016 through June 30th, uh, it was about a 77% loss ratio. What that means is total paid claims out versus um, paid premiums. Now, what I will say is that 77% looks, wow, they're, they're making a lot of money on us. But the reality is, is that's what, what we call an immature 
um, loss ratio year. And when I say immature, it's because it's a first year. So if you think about it, when you go to the doctor, um, when you go to the doctor October 1st, it may take 45 to 60 days for that medical claim to hit. So in, in, a first year, um, in a first year case, there's usually about 45 to 60 days where you're gonna see your medical claims be lower, um, you know, be lower than in a, in a true mature claim year. So, um, so we, were, we, we paid out, again, the paid claims was about 3,649,000. The paid premium was 4,745,000. <clears throat> Last year, um, October 1st, 2015 to September 30, 2016, we were with Allegiant. Um, again, it was a one-year uh, one deal, so um, it was um, an immature claim year, and basically 10 months of claims on 12 months of, of uh, premium. So uh, the loss ratio there we had was a 79%. Um, what a carrier looks for in an immature claim, you know, claim year loss ratio is about a 73%. When you're fully mature, <clears throat> the carriers typically are looking for a loss ratio of somewhere between 85 and 87%. Um, so, uh, so in a first year, that's kind of what they look at. So, we weren't running terrible, um, you know, you know, not running great. And, and again, I think, like I said earlier, first year renewals are always a little tricky um, because uh, you know there's uh, kind of the, the certainty of the unknown that's out there. And I think, I think there were some questions. I mean, we we had the Allegiant data too, but I think we, there were some, you know, a little bit of concerns about potentially the the accuracy of the Allegiant data. So what we did, we decided uh, to, to release an RFP um, and Scott, we, Scott, um, Scott. yes, yes sir. Th that date was wrong, is that not correct? Which one? The top one. Uh, oh, it should be, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, it should be June 30th, 2017. Sorry about that. I apologize. Yeah, it's o October through June 30th of 17. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> um, <coughs> So we did release the, um, we re released a proposal for both fully insured and partially self-funded medical plans on June 26th. Um, we asked for questions back on the 7th. The deadline was the 18th. Uh, we went through everything. I've had conversations with staff and I'm here to make a recommendation uh, tonight. So um, we looked at fully insured and we looked at partially self-funded. Um, I will tell you um, when looking at the partially self-funded, again, the premiums on the fully insured are still running. They're running about the same as if we were partially self-funded or a little bit better. I think, um, I think as we get through this claim year with Blue Cross and have a full mature year, year of claims, I think potentially um, there you know, might be the opportunity in um, 2018 to look at moving self-funding. But looking at the numbers uh, this year, um, with both combined from the Allegiant numbers and the Blue Cross numbers, um, the, the self-funded numbers still were not as aggressive or uh, were not as, uh, you know, as aggressive as the fully insured numbers. So <coughs> on the fully insured responses, we did get three responses. Um, we got Blue Cross Blue Shield who gave us multiple options. TML came in, not competitive. They were a plus 61. UHC came in again. Um, they were not competitive, they were at a 28, they had alternative plans at about a 20. Um, it's a challenge right now on the fully insured, I mean I think you guys, you know, you, you see the news and you hear about the carriers and the marketplace and things and that all flows from the top down. Um, you know, the reality is there's, um, you know, there's just, you've got the bukas that are left that do fully insured and really Cigna doesn't like to do fully insured. So you really, you know, you've got Blue Cross, United, and Aetna um, down in the valley. Sometimes they, they, they struggle with their, their networks and their network discounts. Um, you know, Aetna's trying to get, get some business down here, but again, just um, they haven't been able to put the networks together. So again, options are, were, were a little limited. And also to a first year, being a first year renewal case and then having left a legion, I think sometimes that, that makes it a little, uh, a little tricky too. So. The uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield, um, they offered the renewal for the current plans came in at about 18.8%. So they moved off the, I think we were at 23% when we started. They did offer three alternatives with plan changes. Um, alternative one had three plans um, with benefit changes. It was about a 6.1% increase. 
Alternative two, and I'll show these to you in a, in a minute. Alternative two was actually two plans uh, with a 5.4% increase. Alternative three um, was three plans uh, at a plus 4.8% increase. Each of the alternatives did include an option, the Blue Essentials HMO option, um, which is available in the Valley. Um, it's a smaller network. There's no out-of-network benefits. Um, I will say the physician makeup is about 91% of the physicians that are in Blue Cross's big network are in this network. You can see um, the numbers I've put there. So primary care is about 98%, specialist 83%. The hospitals for Cameron County are Harlingen Medical, Valley Baptist, Valley Baptist Medical Center, Brownsville, and Valley Regional Medical Center. So still a, a uh, you know, still a strong network, just a little bit, a little bit smaller um, than their than their large network. So the renewal, um, you can see a 19% uh, increase um, to keep the plans um, that we have today. So um, you know, did ask Blue Cross to provide alternatives, um, knowing that 19% was was not going to be able to probably be achieved in the budget. So the first option they came back, and what I've done is I've highlighted in yellow uh, the plan changes. So uh, alternative one keeps three plans in place. Um, plan one um, continues to offer, have a deductible at $750 and $1,500 for the family. This would take the coinsurance, so your out-of-pocket maximum, up to $6,550 and to $13,100, um, which is, is much higher than what we have today. Um, and then the family coinsurance would be $13,100 uh, to $26,200. Um, and then changing of the pharmacy from 15, uh, from the 1035-60 to 15-40-60. Um, they did offer a, um, the Blue Essentials uh, HMO network, <coughs> and it would be a $1,500 deductible <coughs> with a $3,000 family deductible. The out-of-pocket maximum would be $3,500 and $7,000. Um, the RX would stay the same. <coughs> And then the third plan option, we would no longer have a $500 deductible plan. Uh, it would be a third PPO option uh, at $1,000 um, $1, individual deductible, $2,000 for a family, coinsurance of $6,550 and $13,100, and the drug plan changes. And this was roughly about 6.18% increase. Um, one of the things when I talked to staff and, and I felt like on this too was um, I felt like the out-of-pocket maximum was a little too high versus kind of what we had today it almost mm -hmm. doubled it so if a person really had a bad event happen to them you know they would either be out the 6550 or the 131 so alternative two is was going to two plans from uh, was going to two plans from uh, three plans that we have today and it would we would get rid of plan three we would have plan one which would it be a seven still have a seven hundred fifty dollar fifteen hundred dollar um family deductible the out-of-pocket maximum would go to four thousand eight thousand we would change the urgent care to seventy five dollars uh have a fifty dollar deductible on the rx which means the first time you would go in to fill your prescription you would you would fill the fifty dollar deductible and it's capped at three times for a family and then we would we would uh, move the drug plan to 15, 40, 65, and 100. I do think it's important. I, I think on the drug plan, I do I do think that's an area that um, that you know whether we needed to make plan changes or not, we probably needed to address because we we had a, a very a very good drug plan. But what we're finding, you know, in the marketplace, I think you're probably reading it. Um, you know, pharmacy trend is running right now anywhere between 12 and 15 percent um, specialty pharmaceuticals are running closer to 25 percent so um, you know most of the clients that we're working with um, it's not that they're cutting pharmacy benefits but they're all they're just they're trying to put some consumer models in place so people are really thinking about you know kind of kind of what their spend is on the pharmacy so this option would also have the blue essentials plan that we talked about <laughs> earlier $1,500 deductible, $3,000 <coughs> for a family. The out-of-pocket max would be $4,000 and $8,000. $75 urgent care and the um, $50 RX deductible and a 1540 65 
and 100. And this, this was the plan was roughly about 5.4% above current. And then the last, the last alternative that they provided for Blue Cross um, would be plan one. Um, right now we currently have a per admission deductible of $250. That would go to 500. We would leave the $750, $1,500 deductible in place. The coinsurance would go to the lower level of $4,000, $8,000, copay, and then the plan changes to the drug plan. The, uh, we would put the HMO in. Um, it would, again, have a $500 uh, per admission deductible. You would have the $1,500, $3,000 deductible, um, the $4,000, $8,000 out-of-pocket max with the plan design changes. And we would continue to offer a third plan um, so we would have a, you know, one plan with a 750 deductible, one with a thousand deductible, one with 1500, and this plan would be a thousand dollar, a thousand for individual, two thousand for a family deductible, four thousand, eight thousand on the out-of-pocket maximum, and a seventy-five dollar copay, and then the um, the drug plan changes again with the the fifty dollar RX deductible and then a fifteen, forty, sixty-five, a hundred. Um, again, still good plans, still allowing. Um, the city to pick up the cost of the uh, of the lowest plan. After talking to staff um, and looking at the options, um, you know the recommendation, uh, you know, kind of landed on on option three. So from a cost standpoint, um, you can see our current plans. We are at about um, total cost of 6.2 million. Um, the city's paying about 5.1 million. Uh, employees are paying about 1.2 million. If we just kept the splits um, the same way with the, the city picking up, um, picking up the 45% for dependents, um, we, you know, the total cost goes to the 6.5 million. And, um, you know, and it goes up, the, the city's cost goes up to 5.1 million and the employees 1.4 million. So, Sir, can I ask you, you bet. Um, those are the current numbers versus what you're proposing, the, the 6.2 and the 5.1. What were they the year before when we went to, the, to this current plan? 6.2, they were about 6.2. We, uh, we um, I think Blue Cross came in at a rate pass for last year. So we were at, so, so 15, 16 would have been about, would have been around the 6.2, 6.3. And then 1617 would be at the 6263. Okay, and the, the 6263 and 15 and 16, uh, what was the employee match the same or the, the, the payable was the 5.1? Yeah, we, yeah, so we did not, um, so for 2015 uh, and 16, then moving to 1617, we did not, the employees did not have an increase at all. Okay, so, so we, we didn't notice an increase the year before. Right? I, mean, I think we did it was uh, very slight. 14, 15, yes. Okay. And, and then you're saying the reason for the big jump because uh, I mean, we're not changing carriers, right? I mean, right. Right. So the reason for the big jump is what? To keep on their current plan? For the big jump on the, and again, I think um, what I've done is just kind of kept the current splits. I think that right. during, what, what during budget. Is, is the, the, the same coverage? To keep everything the same and not change any, any anything with the plan, with Blue Cross Blue Shield, you're showing a 19% increase right. for, for a 19%. And what is the reason behind it? The reason behind it is uh, is due to the claims, the claims information and large claims that are out there. Um, and again, yeah, uh, and do you see those as are they I mean, one-time occurrences? Was it just an anomaly year? I don't. Uh, and, and and do you? Because to keep the current insurance, and you had an increase because they actually use the insurance or whatever, um, wouldn't both the same if it wouldn't do the same thing the following year, right? I mean, unless they came and continue to make claims or well, the claims are what they are, <coughs> right? I mean, and so nobody that's the if everybody had a crystal ball, we'd be great, but right. so they're looking at the claims that they have now. And when they look at that claim, they know what type of claim it is, and so they can project into the future. So that matters. There's lots of things that well, matter. Well, I, I know there's several components of it. But what, what I'm having an issue with it. The last thing I want to do is take insurance away from the employees. Absolutely. And we tried, 
you know, and, and <coughs> we did go out, we marketed, and, you know, again. Humana was not a, a company that we could look at? Or yeah, any, well, any we, other? we sent it to Humana, we sent it to Aetna, we sent it to Cigna. And no response? And no response. So, um, we tried, you know, when we put it out to bid, we make sure that, uh, you know, we work with all the major carriers, and we make sure that, uh, that they all get it, and we make sure they've got good data, um, current data. Um, talk to all the carriers, you know, we, you know, have a question and answer time, you know, to answer any questions. And um, unfortunately, that, that, you know, those were the, the quotes that we got this year. And I, like I said, I wish I, you know, I wish, I wish I had a, a you know, a better, uh, Better numbers. Um, I think, like I said, first year renewals are always tough. And when is um, the deadline, or when do you have to have an answer? Um, <coughs> you know, we don't. I mean, with it being a 10-1, um, a 10-1 renewal, um, so having to get the, the plan changes communicated out. I mean, I, I, we, I, we I, have I, to start I, signing people up in September. Right. right. Because the premiums have to actually start being deducted right. in September. Because I would like to look at it a little harder. I mean, I don't know how you all feel, but I, I'm. I am not in favor of like, trying to take um, employees' benefits away or reducing them for whatever reason. Well, I'd say it's it, this isn't just us; it's a universal situation oh, yes, with the yeah, increase it's, it's in health care. The, the shift has gone to where the employees, you know, bear their share of the burden on the increase, and that's unfortunate. But, unfortunate, but that's right. But that, what I'm saying is that I'm not prepared to cut anything right now and, and that we go find the money or try to figure out how we're going to deal with them because it, it, it's an it's a necessary cost it's a cost of doing business and again we, I'm not prepared right now unless I I need to look at it a little longer or a little harder to find out um, I'm just I'm not prepared to, to do that Yep. Not, not right now. now where, where it stands right now, the employee on dependent coverage would realize an increase right. based on our split, on our percentage that we pay. Right. Uh, but that, again, we're still going through the budget process and we're still having discussions uh, on the budget itself. So this is a budgetary item, but I will tell you that yeah, an 18 percent increase or nearly a 19 percent increase is a huge increase. Understood. Yeah. And, and, um, and, and we've talked about, we've had one budget workshop already, and we've talked about the budget, where revenues are coming in, and uh, some of the expenses that we're going to incur next year. Mm -hmm. So. All right. Well, uh, Scott, go, I mean, <coughs> uh, I'm sorry. Go Commissioner's ahead. had his, you know, uh, I think you've had your yes, opportunity sir. to ask questions, so one, if you want to go ahead and complete your presentation on this. So, you know, the, um, Recommendation working with staff um, is again, you know, I don't think there's any financial advantage after looking at the numbers to go partially self funded this year. I do think it's something for 18, uh, 19 that I think it would be a viable, a viable, a viable option. Um, recommendation would be to remain with uh, fully insured with Blue Cross, um, alternative three plan options, which would result in a 4.81% increase. Um, and also stay with the current agents, which are Shepard Walton and Texas Insurance Services. Question. So, um, alternative three, the employee has the choice of picking plan one, plan two, or plan three. Is that yes, sir. Absolutely. They can pick any one of the three plans. So, this uh, 4.8. 1 percent increase. I'm just doing back of the envelope math. So that's 301,000. If we went 19 percent increase and kept everything as is, uh, we would multiply that times basically five. Uh, so you're looking at 1.4 million dollar increase. Roughly. Correct? Yes, sir. And so the question becomes um, budget wise, we have to afford at least three hundred one thousand dollar increase, but can we afford one point four million dollars increase? Um, we run a tight ship. I think seventy two percent of our income uh, uh, goes to uh, employees, 
employee benefits. <coughs> Does that leave much money to run the rest of the business? So what you're asking them to do is ship the liability to the employee, and you're asking the employee to pay more out of pocket. Right, right. Or we could ask the taxpayer to assume the liability of $1.4 million. Right. And again, that's why I think, I think we need to look at, you know, where... And, and none of this is easy. Oh, yeah. No. And, and this isn't a Harlingen city government <coughs> issue. It's <coughs> across the United States, and companies and governments and businesses are having the same discussion. And that's why I want to look at it a little longer to see if there's any other projects or anything else we're doing that that we could afford to wait or uh, put off and not sure we could well, well, well the calendar's ticking we can't wait for anything yeah i mean I, commissioner i think that's a you know certainly that's a, a reasonable request we want to do the, uh, the, the best that we can for uh, the employees we, we have had a situation in the past i can tell you it was a very difficult situation where uh, we didn't make a decision on our health, on our, on our carrier, in a timely basis, and it caught, and, it, and we, we were switching from one carrier to the next, and so employees did not get enrolled. And employees who had <coughs> severe health issues uh, uh, were didn't didn't have insurance for a few days, it made it very very difficult on on those employees. Uh, I had to. Uh, I had. To, I stood here and apologized to a terminally ill employee uh, for our failure to, to, to timely get this issue resolved and provide insurance for him and his family. And I'm not going to do that again. Uh, uh, we're going to. You know, it, it's important to want to give them the best break they can, but we don't want to delay. Uh, and and if we would, uh, sounds like we've exhausted our everybody that is, is a potential uh, bidder on this. And it sounds like Blue Cross Blue Shield has come up with a pretty good uh, proposal that uh, you know either one or you know whichever one you want to do. I mean, you, you, we can you could you can elect <clears throat> if you think we ought to spend more money at, and, and and then that's a reasonable proposal. But I don't think we're going to find another insurance carrier, and I, I think it would be. No, I'm not asking for another insurance carrier. I think it would be a, I'm trying to I find out a shame to, where to find the money to make sure that they're not losing coverage. I think it would be a shame to to miss, to miss uh, the opportunity to, to to make this contract. All right. Having said that, um, does anybody else have any questions no. on, about the Scott's recommendation? Scott, have we ever had a health not, fair or anything like that where we check <coughs> in and where we have it available to the employees for them to get basic medical information, blood pressure, I think we know, do diabetes do, screening? I think we do do health fairs. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. We so we, oh, yeah, we did. Okay, that's right. They, we used Catapult, which is a vendor Blue Cross does, and Catapult will come out and they do uh, biometric screening and testing. And did we have employees. good participation in that? Uh, everybody that signed up uh, attended, we had like, I think two people that missed it and said, yeah, they had a conflict, we had to register ahead of time. But we're also looking at also doing a regular type of health care versus the biometric one. But it worked well. It worked well. We, uh, we did it along with Waterworks and uh, I think the housing authority also participated. So we have to work with I think it's important to have that opportunity. <coughs> All right. Uh, you want to hear the go on the dental now, or you want to? I didn't know. Do y'all need to take them separately, or? <coughs> I think we take them separately. Listen to both presentations and then do the button. That way he doesn't have to wait. Sure. It's fine. Go ahead. Okay. <coughs> So the voluntary dental, um, what I want to stress too is that this is a voluntary benefit, meaning the city does not put any any cost into this. So this uh, this is paid for by um, by the uh, employee. 
the uh, process that we did was, was very similar. We went out to market um, June 26. We got responses back the 18th. We're here today. Um, we did have, we had a lot of people respond on the dental. Um, of course, we, did, we didn't get a ton of, of, you know, of competitive quotes, but you can see Delta Dental, Emeritus, Blue Cross, IMA, Lincoln. Um, the renewal came, original renewal came back from Aetna at about a 17.8% increase. They provided, you know, multiple options to get that down. Um, you can see, you know, the other carriers like Delta was at 39.75. Emeritus quoted, they, they had a plan that matched at 11.16, but it didn't match benefits. It, it was what we call a MAC plan. I'll explain that again in a minute, a maximum allowable charge plan. Um, Blue Cross came in at about a 42%. Um, IMA was, uh, was a self-funded quote. Um, Lincoln was at plus 31%. So, uh, you know, again, um, good, good players. Just it was, um, you know, the, the rates were just a little, little bit higher. So the current vendor is Aetna. The renewal they came back with was a 16.8. They did give a second year rate cap of 7% for next year. Um, they provided multiple alternatives. Um, I narrowed it to three. Again, since you know the other carriers, none of them really had competitive quotes. So what I'll do is walk you through the, the, the Aetna ones. So our current benefits with Aetna, we've got a $50 individual deductible, 150 family. Our low plan, we have 100% preventive coverage, 100% basic. Um, uh, major is at zero. Endo and periodontics is at 100. And then what that RNC means is it's reasonable and customary. So right now our plan pays 90% of the reasonable and customary charge for that area. Okay. So uh, very good benefit. Very good benefit. Calendar year maximum is 1250. Um, no orthodontia on the low plan. On the high plan, it's a 50, uh, 50 dollar deductible, 100 for preventive, 80 for basic, 50 for major, 80 for perio and uh, and uh, for endo and perio, 90 percent reasonable and customary. We do have an ortho benefit of 50 percent up to a thousand. Um, current rates are 1620, 3175, 5114, 2461, 4871, and 8207. Um, you can see the renewal at 16.8, but all the benefits stay the same, um, mainly, you know, the reasonable and customary. So the options that Aetna provided, so option one is called a MAC plan, so they match the benefits. The difference is reasonable and customary is going to pay 90% of the cost um, for that area. So it's going to look, it's going to look across dentist and average it out and pay 90%. The maximum allowable charge is going to pay up to the um, up to the in-network negotiated rate of Aetna. Big difference. So you might have a um, you know you might have a um, uh, let's say you know you might have a crown. This is going to be probably a lot cheaper, but Let's say you have a crown um, and the reasonable, it's a thousand, uh, let, let's say the crown is 1500, um, reasonable customary pays 90% of that 1500. Um, so that would be 150, so, so it would pay 1350. Um, you know, the, however, on the MAC plan, the negotiator rate's a thousand dollars. So now you've got a delta of $350. It's a, it really is a big difference. And when I asked Aetna, I mean, currently we've got about 51% of the people going to in-network uh, providers. So, you know, 16.8 looks like a big number, but when you start looking at, you know, four or five dollars a month versus all of a sudden if I really need the coverage and I'm going to, you know, and I'm going to get a root canal um, and it's all of a sudden it's five or six hundred bucks out of my pocket, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a big difference. They did quote some other options. Um, so the MAC plan was about a 2% above current. All of them had the 7% rate cap. Um, this plan they quoted, they increased, they doubled the deductible, lowered some of the benefits. This got us to, to about a, a 1%. Um, you know, and I'm just, what I would say on this, um, you know, my recommendation 
and again, we could do either. My recommendation would be to, to renew with the current benefits. The increases range on the low side from $2.72 um, for an employee on the low plan to $13.79 for a family on the high plan. Um, I think moving to any one of those other plans, I think the exposure the member's going to have um, if they had a true dental procedure, whether it be um, a filling, a crown, I think they're going to be paying a lot more out of their pocket versus, um, versus the dollars on the premium up front. And again, um, these run through the, the uh, Section 125 plan. And again, we would recommend staying with the current agents, Shepard Walton and Texas Insurance Services. To get your, your Mac clear in my mind, that $1,500 crown, at 90%, I paid 115 they paid the difference. Right. That's right. On the MAC plan, if they, they, they've negotiated $1,000 on that, so I'm liable for 500 not 300 Right. Correct? Right. Okay. And that's why I, I, I'm just not a huge fan of the MAC plans. Um, now, if, you, if, I, if, at, if Aetna would have told me you guys have 70% of the people going in network, I probably would have said your exposure is a lot less. <laughs> Um, because they're already go they're already going to somebody that's that's at at that cap level, but you know if you if you have a under a MAC plan versus a 90 percent, if you have somebody that that's really needs the dental care, they're going to be coming big time out of their pocket more. And how many of our what did you say the percentage of? So right now they're showing there's about 51 percent of, of the people that are they're utilizing an in-network provider. It's not like and again you can't really compare it to medical because. Um, the dental networks aren't quite, a, you know, they're not as large as, as, as the, the medical. There's just a lot of the dentists don't, don't they don't want to participate in a, you know, in a plan. They'll file for it and everything. They just, they, you know, don't want to sign up for the, the rate, so. <coughs> so then the recap, this is a purely voluntary insurance program available to the employees. Yes, sir. Take it or leave it. Yes, sir. And you're recommending the Aetna renewal, whereas the MAC, the two MAC plans have some deficiencies in them that, if utilized, might cost the employee significantly higher. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and then. Does the staff recommend that we uh, accept <coughs> the consultant's recommendation. consultant's recommendation on the health insurance and on the debt? Okay, so <coughs> um, does anybody have any more questions for uh, Efren or Dan or Scott? Or okay, is there a motion to approve the recommendation as presented on, on, on item number four, which is the health insurance policy? So moved. Is there any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. All right. Item five is consideration of possible to award a voluntary dental health plan for city branch employees for fiscal year 2017 2018 with possible yearly options and authorize the city manager to negotiate and sign a contract. Is there a motion to adopt the staff's recommendation on the dental plan? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? All right. The motion carries. Okay. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for your comments and discussion. A, always a di this is always a difficult uh, issue for us. Uh, as I wish I could say it was going to, I wish I could say, continue to I wish I could say I thought it was going to get easier, but. All right. So. Thank you. you bet, thank you, Scott. I have six consideration <coughs> possible action to propose a desired tax rate for fiscal year 2017-18 and schedule two public hearings to be held on Friday, August 11th at 12 noon and Wednesday, August 16th, 2017 at 5.30 p.m. <coughs> Good evening, Mayor and City Commission. Uh, the tax code requires that when the proposed tax rate exceeds the effective tax rate, the tax union must vote on the proposed rate, record the vote, and schedule two public hearings on the proposal before the tax rate can be adopted. Uh, the tax rate that is being proposed is 0.588827 and does 
exceed the effective tax rate of 0 0.583600. The proposed tax rate is the same rate adopted for the last past eight years when it was lowered from 0 0.59. This rate has been used to calculate the property tax revenue in the proposed fiscal year 2018 budget. Uh, one cent change and the tax rate would equal an additional $303. The tax code section 26.056 subsection D requires the city to hold two public hearings and publish the newspaper ads before adopting a tax rate. Ads will be published notifying the public of the two hearings. Staff recommends approval of the proposed tax rate of 0 0.588827. And I will take any questions. Uh, you said a one penny increase would result in how much extra cash flow? Three hundred and four thousand dollars. <coughs> so we would so back to the last issue, in order to raise one point four million dollars for health insurance, we would have to increase taxes by four cents. Correct. <coughs> Um, which would be about a 75, seven and a half percent increase. No. The rest staff recommendation is to maintain the existing, existing tax rate, correct? Yes. Correct. All right. <coughs> so is there, is there a motion to uh, accept the staff's re recommendation regarding the entire tax rate and the schedule of the two public hearings? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign, motion carries. All right, thank you. And then, uh, item seven, consideration of possible action to approve an ordinance of first reading to amend the city of Arlington's budget for fiscal year 2016-17. The uh, item before the commission is uh, a budget amendment which will allocate funds for grants and other revenues and expenditures that were not previously budgeted and the current budget. Um, exhibit A attached to the agenda um, packet displays total revenues, expenditures, and estimated fund balances uh, by fund um, after the amendment. Um, staff recommends approval and I'm here to answer any questions. Uh, would you read the caption please? Yes. An ordinance amending the revenue and expenditure budget for the city of Harlan, New Texas for fiscal year October 1, 2016 through September 30, 2017. Total budget revenues will increase to uh, $71,919,343. And total budget expenditures will increase to $81,314,848, respectively, <coughs> provided for publication with the caption of this ordinance and remaining other matters related to the result. <coughs> Is there a motion to adopt the ordinance on first reading? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Oh, I'm sorry, what was that number again? Uh, the total budget. The total budget expenditures will increase eighty one million three hundred fourteen thousand eight hundred forty eight. And, and the, I'm sorry, the other number. Oh, I'm sorry. The uh, budget revenues increased seventy one million nine hundred nineteen thousand three hundred forty three. Seventy one million nine hundred nineteen thousand three forty three. Yeah. The catch of the order. <coughs> yeah. Okay. So I'm sure I was doing my math right. Okay. Percentages. Yeah. Okay. Any other discussion? No, sir. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. Motion carries. All right. Item eight consideration of possible action to authorize the Director of Aviation to request from the Federal Aviation Administration a land release from federal obligations. Associated with airport property described as mm -hmm. area number 24 on the airport property map. Mr. Easterly, welcome. Thank you. I'm going to be a regular around here. Um, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, it, it, just like we said here, uh, we have some, some land. It was purchased in 1994 time frame. It's the area area 24 in green, not to be confused with area 51, um, but it's uh, area 24 in green. It's approximately 250. Not, not to be confused with area 51. <laughs> yeah. 51. Sorry, sorry. That was bad, bad, bad and poor taste joke. Um, but uh, in either case, uh, this property is about 250 acres of uh, land that was purchased again in 1994. Every time uh, you, you actually apply for a new grant since that time, 
you have grant assurances, and those grant assurances actually obligate that particular piece of property um, to uh, about 35 different uh, assurances in the grant, and one of them is if you're ever going to sell that property that you have to seek the FAA's approval to sell that property. Mm -hmm. What we want to do is get out of, in front of this. If we find a business in this portion of the Aerotropolis that we just can't uh, seem to make a deal with the, in leasing the property on a long-term basis, that we would have the option to sell a track of land in that area and it would no longer be encumbered. Uh, the process of asking for a release is about 90 days uh, with the FAA. So if we're in, if we find a company that wants to come in, they're looking at property, we won't be able to give them the option of purchasing the property without knowing for sure that it would be released by the FAA. Mm -hmm. Uh, in the, la the last airport board meeting, the airport board recommended unanimously to the commission that uh, we at least uh, seek the release. Uh, it's not guaranteed. The FAA can, uh, can refuse the release. But I feel that it's, it's in a position in an area that's non-aeronautical in, in nature and uh, it's industrial type. So uh, I, I really feel that we, have, we stand a pretty good chance that the FAA would uh, release the property from federal obligations so that we have those options in the future. And were federal funds from the FAA used to acquire the property? Uh, no. That's why Area uh, 24 was uh, carved out of, of there because that was actually purchased with airport uh, revenue and no federal funds. If it was purchased with federal funds, we, if, when we do sell it, we would have to reimburse the, and, the federal and remind funds. Remind me again where the encumbrance comes from for the FAA. And Once you uh, list uh, your airport property on the airport property map in Appendix A that goes with your grant, and that's been done since 1994, the FAA considers that particular piece of property encumbered okay. or, or under obligation of those grant assurances. So if you do that, you're going to revise your map not to show area 24. <laughs> that's that's exactly. And, and that's the only real stipulation because that, I've seen where what you were asking were it, it, it's tied to a grant and therefore you have to. That's get exactly right. The first so thing we would do. Clear and free. We just need their sign <coughs> on to change the map. Yes, yes. If they agree to it, uh, we'll actually submit to them with the uh, with the request a new airport layout plan and airport property map that will not show area 24 there on the map so it will no longer be obligated under future grants. So this provides liquidity and negotiating negotiating power on the airport's part. That's that's exactly right. We want to make sure that uh, if we have a company and, and that's that's great for the, for an airport, great for the economy around here, that we can act quickly. Land, yeah. But should it arise? Yes, exactly. Free. Yeah, exactly. <coughs> All right. Is there a, is there any more questions? Any more questions? Is there a motion to uh, authorize the director of aviation to request a land release from the FAA? Someone. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, like sign. <coughs> motion carries. I, I'm going to go ahead and s skip items nine, ten, and eleven. I'll come back to those and go to item twelve consideration possible action to approve an ordinance of first reading amending chapter 22 health article 2 emergency and non-emergency medical transportation services of the code of ordinance and city of Arlington, establishing an effective date providing for publication and obeying other matters related to the foregoing uh, yes mayor uh, this uh, ordinance amendment uh, where administration is proposing relates to an ordinance that uh, provides for <coughs> our uh, exclusive arrangement with the south texas emergency care foundation which in addition to the ordinance is secured by a contract between the city and, and that organization. Um, the, the purpose of, of the amendments we're proposing tonight are, are, to, are to propose non-substantive uh, clarifications to the ordinance that, that uh, uh, make the, the exclusive nature of the relationship between the city and South Texas Emergency Care Foundation mm -hmm. a little more clear, and to also provide some additional clarifications to the types of services that come within the exclusivity and, and what types of services are. And that's that's the, the gist of the change. Would you call this just housekeeping then? It, it's largely housekeeping, just to make it clear that anyone who, who happens upon this ordinance and reads it understands that uh, the, the city is uh, in, in, uh, is obligated to, under our contract with South Texas Emergency Care, provide for, for their exclusive provision of services um, that are covered by the ordinance within the city of Arlington. Uh, I ask a question. <coughs> Normally, when they come to us, with the, would we have an understanding that? They're exclusive with us, but this really just defines it. So if somebody tried to, it it removes look a at it, it, it's clear. It's clear. It removes a provision of the of the ordinance that, that may have given someone the impression that that any 
that a provider of these services was eligible to apply for a license, despite the exclusivity that we've got with, with, with South Texas. And is that the only clarification? Uh, that there's there's uh, an adjustment to the, the description of the types of services that are that are uh, that are uh, covered by the ordinance to to ensure that, that we're not that the ordinance isn't interpreted to cover things that, that aren't part of that exclusive uh, and uh, and, uh, and that's, that's it that's, that's, it's just like a housekeeping non-substantive clarification to make sure that 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 or that the relationship is clear. Okay, we have representatives of South Texas Emergency Care Foundation <coughs> here, and you all are uh, in agreement with the proposed changes to the ordinance. Yes, Mayor, we are. Uh, I might just add one thing to what Alan has said. There, there's been a question since this ordinance was adopted a number of years ago about uh, whether or not the ordinance prohibited someone from bringing a patient from outside the city of Harlingen to a facility in the city of Harlingen and then taking that patient back in what we would consider to be a bona fide round trip from outside of the city to a medical facility. And one of the changes in the, in the amendment you have tonight is to clarify that that bona fide round trip is not something that is prohibited by the ordinance. In our meetings with uh, chief addicts and, and others, it's been pretty clear that that was presenting some difficulty to the police department in enforcing the ordinance, and so that change has been is in, incorporated in these amendments to kind of ease that burden on the police department and make it clear that the round trips are not covered. They're not covered. No. Okay. Okay. <coughs> so would you read the caption, please? Yes, sir. An ordinance amending Chapter 22 of Health Article to emergency and non-emergency medical transportation services of the code of ordinance of the, of the city of Harlingen, establishing an effective date, providing for publication and ordaining other matters related to the full code. Is there a motion to adopt the ordinance so on first reading? Second. 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 Any other discussion? Just oh. one question. I, I just want to make sure we're clear here. So if somebody <coughs> brings a patient into town, hospital, dialysis clinic, whatever, they can't wait for them. They they leave and then they have to arrange a separate transport to go back. No, they can wait for them. They can the, wait for them. Yeah. The, the, the amendment clarifies that if someone is picking a patient up outside the city of Harlingen, bringing them to a facility in the city of Harlingen, and on the same day returns them back to the original location, they do not have to have a license to do that in the city of Harlingen and they're not prohibited <coughs> by the ordinance from doing that. Okay. Thank you for the clarification. Okay. That bothered me. Okay. But if they drop somebody off in the city of Harlingen and then hang around to see if they can find They can't come else. back two weeks later and right. pick them up and say that was a round trip. Right. 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 <coughs> okay. Any other questions? All those that ever say aye? Aye. aye. Those opposed like sign. Motion carries. All right. Thank, thank you. Uh, gentlemen for being here tonight. Thank you for all you do for our community and the great service that you all provide to the citizens of Harlem. Thank you. Uh, let's go ahead and do farmer's market to uh, item 13, consideration of possible action to accept or reject bids or work contract to construct a Harlem farmer's market for Canada. Mayor, members of the commission, team manager. Uh, the Valley Baptist Legacy Foundation awarded $134,800 to the Mayor Wellness Council to construct canopies for the farmer's market. Uh, you may recall on February 15th, we approved the memorandum of agreement with the Harlingen Farmer's Market to allow for the construction of the canopies. We then subsequently amended the agreement on April 5th to allow for electrical structures to be constructed as well. Uh, the city went out for bid and on July 13th, we received three uh, the lowest bid was submitted by Hallmont LLC for $113,000 uh, even. Uh, John Piercy reviewed uh, the bid and is recommending an award uh, to the contractor in the amount of $113,000. Uh, staff recommends approval of the uh, contract. Okay, is there a motion to uh, accept the bid as recommended? So moved. Second. Motion to second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, like sign. Mm -hmm. Motion carries. All right, let's go back to item nine consideration possible action to approve the facility use agreement between the city of Harlingen and the Aurora Girls <coughs> Fast 
pitch softball for the use of softball complex or Royal Park and authorize the city manager to sign the agreement. Good evening, Mayor, Commissioners, uh, City Manager. This um, agreement is before you all uh, for consideration. Uh, it's The agreement is similar to what we approved last year. Um, the um, All the documentation has been received by our office and uh, we did take it to, to the Park Advisory Board on July 18th and they also have made recommendation for approval. Um, so staff and Park Advisory Board do uh, recommend approval. Is there a motion to approve the facility use agreement? Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. I suppose like sign motion carries. I have 10 consideration of possible action to approve the facility use agreement between the City of Arlington Women's Soccer League for the use of Arlington Soccer Complex and authorize the city manager to sign the agreement. Uh, this is this is the same um, or similar. The um, contract is, is the same as last year's. The, uh, all the documentation has been received by our office mm -hmm. and uh, the, the Park Advisory Board has reviewed it on July 18th and uh, the board and uh, staff do recommend approval. Okay, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, like sign, motion carries. Item 11, consideration of possible action to approve an ordinance on first reading to repeal Article 4, Sections 36 through 77 through 36 through 105, Chapter 36 of the Arlington Code of Ordinances to eliminate the Arlington Tennis Advisory Board and ordaining other matters related to the foregoing. Uh, Mayor, City Commission, uh, City Manager, um, we brought this to you all uh, for consideration. Uh, the last uh, meeting that, that the uh, Tennis Advisory Board has conducted was back in 2013 and we had a, we've had a real difficult time trying to get a um, quorum uh, for the board and uh, I believe there's two vacancies on that board right now and so it's been really difficult and um, over the last two years uh, or three years we've been taking uh, items that, that deal with the tennis um, uh, the HB Tennis Center to our Park Advisory Board for action. So what we'd like to do is to um, eliminate the, um, the board um, or repeal it and have all the activity go before uh, the um, Park Advisory Board. Okay. Uh, so there'll still be citizen in input just through the Parks Advisory Board? Yes, sir. Anybody have any questions about this? Then Alan, would you read the caption please? <coughs> An ordinance of the City of Arlington, Texas, <coughs> repealing the Arlington Code of Ordinance, Article 4, Section 36 77 through 36 105 of Chapter 36 in its entirety, eliminating the Arlington Tennis Advisory Board of Directors and ordaining other matters related to the board. Is there a motion to adopt the ordinance on first reading? So moved. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. I um, 14 board appointments. I have none. None. I have a reappointment of Kevin Campbell to the Utility Board of Trustees. All right. So a motion to accept the board appointments. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, like sign, motion carries. Out of 15, executive session, closed session on the following items. Attorney A, attorney constitutional pursuant to section 551.071, text government code to provide legal advice and counsel in connection with certain collective bargaining issues contained in the notice of intent to bargain by the duly recognized majority of the bargaining agents of the city's law enforcement officer, the Harlington Police Officer Law Enforcement Association, and the Harlington Professional Firefighters Association, and B, sections 5.1.087 regarding commercial financial information for the business prospect with which the city is conducting a development discussions and or to discuss uh, deliver or deliberate financial or other incentives for the business prospect known as Project Liberty and Project K under C and to seek legal advice from the city attorney regarding that matter. Is there a motion to go into executive session? I'll move, Mayor. All in favor say aye. We have a second, second. We have a second, a second, second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're now uh, going to meet.
uh, in the conference room with our attorneys uh, regarding some matters in executive session. So there may, there is one item on the agenda that there could be action on when we return. Thank you. Okay, we're out of executive session at 7.22. This is where we conduct the can audience you, drawing get, for a 16 inch color TV. <laughs> We're missing two. They're talking, right? You did tell everybody they have to be present to win, right? Yes. It's under one chair out there. <laughs> Separate them. Separate them. <laughs> Pull them apart. Okay, so uh, we're going to go now to <coughs> item 16, which is the consideration and possible action to authorize the city manager to proceed with the project liberty to discuss the executive session. Is there a motion to authorize the city manager to proceed with project liberty? as discussed in executive session. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Item 17, citizen communication, no citizen communication. So ladies and gentlemen, we're adjourned.